Hey y'all, Irix Guy here back again, and I'm in the studio today. And uh, pardon my uh, my purple black face or whatever right here, because I've got uh, I've got a uh, it's a thing called pomegranate. It's a pomegranate smoothie, but also put blueberries in it, so my entire face has died. Um, actually, when I mix this up, and my fingertips are dyed too. I've got I've got purple fingertips, so you know, pardon that. But I'm not going to let it get in the way with a, uh, you know, in the way of a live show. So, you know, we're going to rock and roll here with uh, with uh, all kinds of good stuff. Obviously, the Mavic Air 2. Man, I can't be more excited. The Mavic Air 2 uh, should be arriving any day now. Um, you know, obviously, if you if you haven't picked up the Mavic Air 2 yet, you know, that's that's perfectly fine. But, you know, if you're going to wait for my unboxing and my field test, you know, I can appreciate that. And, you know, but if, if you are looking to order the Mavic Air 2, you know, head on over to EpicDroneShow.com and click Buy a Drone, and you can find the, uh, the Mavic Air 2 there, and, and also the other drones also. But, uh, yeah, a lot of stuff going on. The, uh, the interesting thing, and a lot of y'all had, had commented about this, and I'm not on my, my green screen set back, is back there, by the way, when you see my other other studio set but i just decided to keep this one very informal you know i felt like getting online and uh and doing a live show so you know, I mean, you know i can't i can't get the uh the pomegranate and the blueberries off my face but you know it doesn't matter you know this is all about the uh the conversation and the fun and and talking about drones and questioning what's next you know what's coming next for uh for drones so yeah mavic air 2 you know definitely a uh a drone i'm going to move my microphone over here a drone that has uh that has surprised a lot of us because you know to be able to have such good battery life and again i'm saying this on paper because i haven't received my mavic air 2 yet but you know something with such exceptional battery life something with uh you know with 4k 60 also the 1080p man I mean, if you're still, and there's nothing wrong with 1080p, because most people, especially if you're watching from a mobile device, the, the benefits at 4K will provide while watching from a mobile, mobile device are minimal. So, you know, there's still value in filming in, uh, you know, filming some content in 1080. And one of the cool things is, is the super high frame rate um, that the Mavic Air 2 can do in 1080. So, you know, if you want to speed up, slow down, you know, retime those videos, you know, that's an incredible, uh, you know, an incredible option that, that Mavic Air 2 brings to the table. So, yeah, I'm looking at my, looking at my studio monitor here and <laughs> that stuff on the face. Geo one hello, man. Welcome aboard. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Got a lot of people out there today. Um, you know, obviously, if you're watching this at approximately 8.06 p.m. New York City time, uh, Eastern time, this is a live show. So anything that you that you type, you know, we can we can chat about. And uh, yeah, man, I mean, it's 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 going to be, you know, drones here. You know, we've we've been uh, we've been waiting for a while. And, you know, the Mavic, the Mavic 2 Pro and the Mavic 2 Zoom, outstanding drones. And, you know, also the Mavic Mini, I mean, completely different, doesn't do 4K, but it does 2.7K, and to be so small and so lightweight, and also USB rechargeable, the Mavic Mini has brought something to the playing field that, you know, a lot of people have never seen. Uh, Jungle D Outdoors TV, welcome aboard, man, welcome aboard, good to see you here, what's up, bro? No, no, man, just drinking my, drinking my smoothie, I've, I've got blueberries and pomegranate and uh, pineapple and mango and and uh, it's just a really good thing. the The problem with a smoothie, though, and I guess I need to start drinking with straws. If if you drink a smoothie out of the blender, you get your face painted up. So see, my face is painted, but I don't care. You know that's the beauty of being an independent YouTube channel. You can do whatever you want to do, and the main thing that counts is what's right here on my shirt, and it says "Epic Drone Show." So that's right. Head on over to EpicDroneShow.com. You know, for all of your drone and drone accessory needs, things are about to get super exciting. You know, obviously, when there aren't new drones for a while, it's it's kind of cool. Well, it's kind of disappointing because you don't have a new drone to 
to obsess over. But when there isn't a new drone for a while, it's kind of a cool thing because what it does, it builds that anticipation. So when a new drone comes out, in this case, the Mavic Air 2, I know I am, I am turbo excited and I'm sure y'all are as well. Um, Jungle D Outdoor says, that's all good stuff, man, for sure. Yeah, I mean, you got to, and that's one thing, talking about, uh, you know, stepping away from drones for a second, but, you know, talking about smoothies, you, get, you really got to be careful with your ingredients because anything, even things that you may find in the grocery store that say, you know, 100% juice or all natural juice or whatever, you've really got to look and see what's in there because if you're, if you're buying stuff, a lot of times you'll find that, yeah, it may have real juice, but it may have high fructose corn syrup. It may have added sugars. You know, there, it may have some dyes and this, that, and the other. So, um, you know, when I get my when I get my ingredients, you know, I'm very careful about what I do. If I don't get it straight from the garden, I make sure that what I buy frozen, like these blueberries, you know, 100%, you know, it's just a blueberry. And the pomegranate juice, 100% pomegranate juice, doesn't have any of that... Uh, of that added sugar or uh you know or anything along those lines food coloring and, and stuff like that that could that could make it bad and then uh you know the pineapple juice i'm using 100 percent pineapple juice nothing added to it and uh and then mango mango juice 100 percent mango juice and then also put some uh put some mangoes in here as well so i mean it's and ice you know i put ice in here so i mean it's a it's a good drink but you know it does come with its <laughs> with its drawbacks but uh yeah i just wanted to get on this live stream because you know we're we're on the cusp right now of something uh potentially earth shattering and you know maybe not as maybe not as big of an impact as what we've seen in the past from well i mean i mean obviously the original phantom launch you know that that's something that's difficult to trump because it's something that you know was brought to the table we didn't expect it to be so awesome you know, the DJI Phantom is without a doubt the drone that started the drone, uh, the drone hobbyist industry. So, and with that being the case, I mean, now, you know, we're seeing smaller, lighter, more capable. We're seeing better cameras, better battery life, better communications technology. You know, one of the biggest things with, uh, with Mavic Air 2, you know, looking at the original Mavic Air, it's like, you know, that was a good drone. You know, you could do 4K 30. It was a good drone. Um, you know, nothing high end camera wise like a mavic air like a mavic 2 pro that has a hasselblad camera with a one inch sensor but still a very capable drone but the mavic air was plagued by something that wasn't a problem for me but a lot of people did find it to be a problem people that were in more congested areas uh, people that had a lot of wi-fi you know wireless network interference uh the the mavic air original was uh, plagued by that because Mavic Air Original used uh, used Wi-Fi. And one of the coolest things about Mavic Air 2, it's going to be using OcuSync. So I mean, you're talking about you're talking about a communications technology that you know if the operator wasn't careful, you know the the drone could fly <clears throat> an extreme distance. And and I'll admit, and you know not in the not in the United States or anywhere, but out over international waters with nothing around. I have tested the range of drones and I mean it is it is it is sinister you know how far a drone with OcuSync can fly line I mean it's if there's no obstructions you know out over open ocean international waters it is sinister how far that drone can fly so you know looking at that technology and bringing you know DJI's blessed us with uh with OcuSync for the Mavic Air 2 which is important because you know, I mean, obviously we're going to fly a line of sight to be safe and responsible, but having that ultra reliable communication system in place so much better than Wi-Fi, I mean, that's that's incredible. So, you know, for your standard flights and you're going out, you're filming a YouTube video, you're going out, you're just having fun or whatever, having that OcuSync is such a value add. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's it's amazing that DJI was was kind enough to include OcuSync with the Mavic Air 2. And, you know, and all of this, again, is leading up to, you know, what's next? You know, what is Mavic 3 going to bring to the table? You know, and a lot, you know, several of y'all uh, throughout the past few shows, you've commented about Mavic 3. You think the Mavic 3 uh, could potentially come out at the end of 2020. 
um, and then others are saying to start the you know the first quarter of 2021. I'm kind of leaning more towards 2021, just because they've still got their pro drone. They've got Mavic 2 Pro, and now they're going to have Mavic Air 2, which is without a doubt going to cannibalize the sales of uh, of Mavic 2 Zoom, and it'll probably put a huge dent in the sales of Mavic 2 Pro. But having not flown, having not received my Mavic Air 2 yet, you know, it's hard to predict. It's hard to uh, speculate how well that camera might perform. I mean, sure, it doesn't have a one-inch sensor. And, you know, if you're not a camera person, um, you know, to to quickly summarize the value that a one-inch sensor brings to the table, it adds better low-light performance. And then also depth of field, you know, if you want to get if you want to manually focus upon an object and, and make the background blurred, um, you know, that's called depth of field um, or subject isolation when you're, when you're filming people. And, you know, there's a lot of things like that that, you know, for your workflow, and at least with my workflow with drones, I don't care about depth of field. You know, I, I care about filming the environment. But it'll be interesting to see, you know, part of the filming the environment that I do and you, you can check out my Mavic 2 Pro videos where I was filming sunsets over the islands and this, that, and the other. Um, you know, being able to get that really high-quality, low-light performance without all the film grain and this, that, and the other, you know, just really high-quality performance from that one-inch sensor. And, you know, again, until I test with the Mavic Air 2, I won't be able to, you know, do a side-by-side comparison of, okay, this is, this is Mavic, Air 2's cam- Mavic Air 2's camera, low light performance versus Mavic 2 Pro cameras, low light performance. So it's going to be interesting to see with this newer camera technology, you know, how well has uh, DJI positioned Mavic Air 2 to perform from, from a video perspective. Now, the photography perspective, you know, that's, uh, by the way, the, the Mavic 2 Pro's camera for still photos was incredible. But it's going to be interesting to see how the uh, the Mavic Air 2's camera for still photos will perform because I you know looking at it on paper it looks like DJI's put a lot of thought into that so you know what better time to put thought into stuff you know when it's when we're in a pandemic and you got to sit around and think you know how can we improve this how can we make this better you know yeah we don't have a competitor right now but if we did you know how can we make our product better so that if a competitor comes to the street that we'll just run, you know, run circles around them. <laughs> and I think DJI does need competition. And I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm often accused of being a DJI fanboy, and I respect that uh, because I can see how the perception would be that I'm a DJI fanboy because most of the drones that I fly are DJI. And I have flown, you know, I've flown the Parrot. I've flown the GoPro Karma. I flew the, uh, what was it, Unique? Yeah, Unique uh, Typhoon H. Flew that drone. Never got into the all tail. Didn't didn't have any. Didn't capture my interest at all. Uh, same with the Skydio or Skydio. That one didn't capture my interest. But you know, I, I wish that you know, I wish that someone would step up to the plate. You know, like a Microsoft or a Google or an Apple, and say, you know what? Or Tesla. Can you imagine a Tesla drone? <laughs> I mean, somebody ought to step up to the plate and say, you know what? We're gonna dethrone DJI and just get that nasty competition going and get price wars created, spark more rapid innovation. And that's, you know, that's the problem is, as we were discussing in a previous show, it was one of the walk shows. There's not enough competition now to, to uh, create the perceived need for, uh, for innovation. And how's the audio sound, by the way? I've, I'm in this corner and you can check out my video, the studio updates. I've got these acoustic panels all over the walls, man, and it's, it's, uh, I have a feeling that the audio should be pretty, pretty good now. I, I struggled with poor audio, and, you know, part of, uh, part of being quarantined was realizing that, you know, I'm in this space when there's no opportunity to go out into the real world and, and, uh, and do things because of the pandemic, you know, you spend more time, Fisher Price 2022, <laughs> The Fisher Price drone. Hey man, it could be a it could be an educational tool, you know, for uh, what is that? STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Yeah, that'd be a cool um, man. I just saw this hair in this uh, 
did another uh, self buzz cut today. Um, not gonna go to a not gonna go to a hair salon and get the hair cut. Just gonna do it myself because of the COVID. Um, yeah, I mean we've got it's there's there's so many things that are gonna be coming here soon and and uh, audio is really good. Russell, I appreciate it, man. You can see back there behind me. I've got that uh, I've got that other mic. This is the Yeti, which is an amazing mic. And and I like both of the I like this mic and the road that I have back there. And the reason being is that neither of these mics have a uh, have a, it mows at liftoff. <laughs> um, neither of these mics have a permanently attached cable in the bottom, a permanently attached USB cable. So that's nice. So like this one, for example, this particular mic that I'm on now came with a uh, uh, came with a just a standard USB cable, you know, the kind of fat USB cable. But since it's not permanently made it, I bought a uh, USB-C cable, and now I'm able to connect this into, it's connected into my MacBook Pro that's over here right now with a USB-C. So just a really good mic. Um, but, you know, with this mic and that mic that's behind me back there on my green screen set, it, uh, you know, until, until I installed these acoustic panels, this room had horrible room echo and you know that 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 was a big research project and i tell you if you're looking for and you know whether it's home audio you know maybe you're uh maybe you're a youtuber as well whatever the case may be if you have a room or even in an office environment maybe it's in your office and people complain about echo or whatever these acoustic panels number one they look professional you know i i, I did my like like always, you know, I perform my research and uh, uh, you know tried to tried to find what was out there and and I kept finding these eggshell mattress looking things, you know, just that cheap uh, eggshell mattress type material that had ridges in it, and I'm like that's going to look awful in the studio, and then I found this company that makes these panels and and you check out my video Acoustamac, um, I mean they're they're incredible. I mean they they've just they're very well made. I mean they, it seems like they're probably handmade, and then they've got this really thick and very good looking fabric on top of them. It doesn't look cheap at all, uh, and that that was one thing you know with with Iron Skies Adventure Channel approaching a hundred thousand subscribers, you know I don't want this channel to uh, you know the studio to look cheap because I've got a space, and actually you can't see it on the camera, but I've got a space over there. As soon as I hit 100,000 subscribers, my 100,000 subscriber YouTube trophy, the silver play button, is going to go there on the wall. So I had to make make sure that I had room for that. Infused Adventure says, "Have you seen Altel Evo 2 with 8K?" Man, I've honestly I haven't seen it yet. And and the thing is, and 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 I don't want to sound uh, what's the word for it. Uh, I'm going to go to their website here. I don't want to sound anti Alltel, but uh, let's see. Let me go to their site and I'm going to load it up and look at it. I just. They rubbed me the wrong way, man. When they came out with. Uh, when they were at CES, and I forget the year, but Alltel was at CES. And it's when they were there, Consumer Electronics Show, and they had the drone. And the drone had modular camera. I think they had a 360 camera. A uh, At the time, was it a 4K? And, and then maybe an infrared or something camera. And they had this great-looking drone. And I was excited about it, and I was ready to pull the trigger on it. And it never, it never materialized. And then they came out with, it's like they're coming out with all, and I'm looking at the site right now, it's like they're coming out with all this stuff, but it all seems kind of short-lived. And I don't see, from a from a price perspective, and, and notice, like, most of the stuff will say it's sold out or whatever. I mean, it's, it's weird. I just, it, it doesn't instill a feeling of confidence for me to you know, to, to buy it. And I'm looking at this one now that you were talking about with 8K. Wow. Yeah, I mean, 
they just, you know, they lost their failure to deliver with what they said at uh, at CES. I mean, I was genuinely interested in that drone, and I was ready to, you know, to pull the trigger and, and unbox and review and field test it here on Iris Guys Adventure Channel, epicdroneshow.com. But it never materialized. And when any sort of company cries wolf, it rubs me the wrong way. And I mean, maybe I'm too, maybe I'm not forgiving enough, you know, and maybe, um, maybe I'm too hard on these drone companies. Maybe I am, but they've lost me. I mean, they've lost my interest. I mean, now, you know, if they want to send me a free review kit, you know, obviously I would, I would be happy to review it with the mention that, you know, it was sent to me for review purposes. I buy my own drones. You know, I don't want to have any sort of perceived allegiance to, you know, drone brand, drone brand A, B, or C. But in the case of, in the case of Altel, whatever it is, the Evo 2, or the, uh, what's the other one, the Skydio, Skydio, or whatever, if either of those drones, if, if they wanted to send me one to review, I'd be happy to review it, but I'm not going to buy it, just because I don't have, I just don't have the warm and fuzzies. I don't. And, and I mean, I've picked up, I purchased the, uh, the Parrot Bebop, the Parrot, uh, Parrot Anafi, the Unique Typhoon H, and the GoPro Karma. So, you know, I'm not all DJI, but I just, and I don't know, Infused Adventures, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. And I mean, if you, you know, if you pick up one of those Evo 2s, you know, let me know how it is. Cause I just, I don't know, man. I, <sighs> hmm. I don't know. I mean, if it was cheap, if it was a cheap alternative to DJI, then, you know, maybe I'd consider it. But, you know, it begs the question, well, you know, they just released the Evo 1. Did that one not do too well? Why are they already bringing something else out? And just because they're bringing it out, does that mean it's actually going to release? Because they've cried wolf before. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't under... I've got a pretty solid background in marketing, and I just don't understand their marketing strategy. I mean, I hate to say it, I just don't. I mean, at least, <laughs> and, and, and I hate this for GoPro because I love GoPro action cameras, but, you know, with GoPro, at least when the uh, GoPro Karma was was released, then, the, you know, they were quickly surprised by, oh, DJI released a better drone. It was a Mavic Pro. Oh, and then also... Your safety recalled. So you know, GoPro at least acknowledged that, you know, hey, we've brought a we've brought a drone to market. We were a victim of uh, you know of a safety potential sh- potential safety issue with the GoPro Karma, and they had to recall it. And then number two, they were victim of oh, the biggest drone manufacturer in the world released something that made their drone immediately obsolete. So you know, at least GoPro didn't dabble around and and try to uh you know try to make things work that they probably are better you know in their in their wheelhouse probably sticking with action cameras is a better thing uh Advent, infused adventure says yeah the h was a bust at least first version the camera broke on it right now yeah the h man I, you know it was I will tell you what they got right with the H, the unique Typhoon H on paper. What they got right was the retractable landing gear. That was kind of cool. You know, it was a cool factor. What they got wrong was everything else. And and they, uh, you know, they had, it was a cool looking drone, but it was too big and it was too heavy. And I understand that the size and weight of drones, you know, like the Mavic 2 Pro and now the Mavic Air 2, you know, they've continued to become smaller. So, you know, if, if, and, and I'd mentioned this the other day during the live stream, it was one of the walk shows, but uh, what if DJI got a wild hair and they said, you know what, we're going to reimagine the DJI Phantom. You know, what if DJI, their R&D team, because obviously they've got money, what if they took the cosmetics of the DJI Phantom and they reimagined it to a very small and very lightweight drone. So to do that, what they would need to do, and DJI, if you're watching this, feel free to toss me one to, to review. <laughs> uh, 
a, a prototype, obviously. But, you know, if they had the original Phantom body, that type of look, and then they had uh, they had landing gear that would uh, that would extend, and then also retract. So for for travel, you know, instead of having a traditional Phantom where you've got the body and then you've got the landing gear, the legs, and the camera, and all of that, what if all of that would retract into the body for transport? And what if the arms, you know, traditional Phantom, the arms are part of the let's just call it a unibody, you know, that one body. They're part of the fusel- fuselage. But what if they reimagined the Phantom and the arms were also able to extend and retract? So in essence, what you could do, what DJI could do, is they could keep that Phantom DNA to some degree. But the difference would be that when you're traveling with DJI Phantom, that it's just kind of a, you know, a ball type shape. But when you take the Phantom out into the field, the arms come out, you pop the propellers in the motor zone. And then when it, you know, when it, uh, before you take off, you got to extend the landing gear and put the camera on. Great opportunity to add a modular camera option to the Phantom, whatever you want to call it. So, uh, Michael says, uh, let's see, Infuse Adventure says, yeah, I have Mavic Air. I'm going to pick up Air 2. Hey, man, when you pick up Air 2, <laughs> and I'll shamelessly, I'll shamelessly mention it, just head on over to epicdroneshow.com and click buy a drone. You'll find it there. Or go to irixguy.com forward slash Mavic Air 2, and that'll take you to the same place. Uh, Michael says, innovate or die in anything should be a business goal. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the thing. I mean, you know, it's, it, it, yeah, I'm a big drone guy, but I mean, I've got, I've got multiple concurrent professional interest and, and, and you're right. I mean, if, if, if businesses don't innovate, you know, they may, they may stay afloat, you know, they may keep their head above water, but to really succeed and to really continue to advance within the business realm, you're right. You've got to innovate. And, and DJI is in a unique spot because DJI doesn't have competition. I mean, yes, there's other people that make drones. You got Altel, you got Parrot, you've got what is it, Unique, uh, Hubson. I mean, you've got other companies that make drones, but there's none of them that have said, you know what, we're going to challenge you. The closest challenge that I saw, well, there were two. Number one was Parrot Anafi. I thought that was a semi-serious attempt, but it was rushed. You know, had the Peridonofi been more refined, had the Peridonofi instilled confidence in the buyer that, hey, this is a drone that may last, it, it didn't do that for me. I mean, it was so flimsy, and I'm very careful with all my cameras, my camera lenses, all of my electronics, my drones, but, you know, the original Peridonofi did not instill even a reasonable, even a reasonable degree of confidence that this thing's not going to tear up in a few weeks. So, you know, for that reason, you know, the, the original Peridonofi was not a serious competitor for DJI. But I think that if Parrot would, uh, would pursue an Anafi 2 or an Anafi Pro, you know, something more high-end as far as build quality is concerned, I think they're a company, I think Parrot's a company that could, if they chose to do so, and they chose to execute properly, I think the Parrot's a company that could seriously compete with DJI. You know, GoPro can't. GoPro could have. You know, GoPro should have, when their drone was recalled, they should have scrapped the Karma. They shouldn't have brought the Karma back out. They should have said, hey, you know, we appreciate our fans. You know, we know that we're an action camera company. Um, You know, we've got the best action cameras on the market, and we want to bring you the best experience with the drone. You know, sorry about our GoPro Karma version 1. We acknowledge we failed. We didn't see that coming. However, stay tuned for what's next. You know, GoPro could have could have taken their failure and turned it into something positive. But they didn't. They just exited the drone business. And, you know, maybe GoPro exited the drone business for other reasons. I mean, maybe there's things that we're not aware of that, you know, prompted them to exit. Uh, who knows? I mean, but I, I was... I was uh, 
I, I don't know. And I mean, part of me with GoPro thinks that, you know, they're, they're so profitable. They, they, do, they do have the best action camera. And, you know, maybe they decided, hey, you know, we're, we're trying to step inside an arena that we know nothing about. And, you know, it would be in our best interest to focus upon what we do best. And that's our action camera business. And I think that's what they decided. I don't, I don't think with, with GoPro it was necessarily that they couldn't create a good drone. I think it was more of a, hey, we're an action camera company. We're going to go 100% and, and remain 100% laser focused upon what we do best. And that's action cameras. And, you know, and we're not going to innovate. I mean, Go, uh, GoPro innovated heavily when they released the action camera. They released those cameras before consumers, including myself, even realized, you know, the use case. You know, it's like, you know, wh- well, why would I want that camera? You know, I've got, a, I've got a camera that's waterproof already, or I've got a camera that's, you know, got a nice lens or whatever, or a camcorder. You know, why do I want a camera that doesn't even have, a, you know, a proper screen on it? And, and that was just, that's why they were so why GoPro was so next level because what they had done, they had created a camera that, that could survive, you know, a reasonable amount of, of abuse, a camera that was waterproof, and a camera that could attach to almost anything. So, you know, they were ahead they were ahead of the pack. I mean they they, they had created a camera before YouTubers like myself existed or knew that there was an opportunity to get on YouTube and and uh, share adventure travel and you know adventure activities this that and the other i mean gopro was ahead of the was ahead of the pack without a doubt so you know that's uh that's gopro is a very very cool company and i guess it's like most most companies that that really hit it big i mean they they kind of uh they want to continue to grow or they just become comfortable with what they're best at and in gopro's case i think they just they became comfortable and i mean I mean, heck, their CEO's got a mega yacht. <laughs> you know, he's he's realized that uh, Nick Woodman has realized that hey, he's created an empire. He's got everything he wants, and he wants the, the brand to continue to do well with minimal risk. And you know, that lack of uh, you know the creating the company to begin with was a huge risk. But I think he he and his team quickly realized that you know this is. This would take a lot of time, a lot of energy to do it well. You know, let's just stick with what's safe. Let's stick with what we do best, and let's continue to grow that because it's still a huge business. And I and I think that's what happened with GoPro. But I just, you know, from from other drone manufacturers like Parrot, I just I think Parrot's plagued by by a different problem. I think the Parrot's plagued by oh, we're a toy a toy company, and I think Parrot is unable to take that toy manufacturer mentality out of their heads. And I think that's the reason that Parrot has not yet become a serious competitor for DJI. And then you've got a, these other companies. Oh, man, you know, they, they, they want to, they really want to penetrate the drone space. I mean, Unique and, and Alltel and what's the other one, Skydio and, and uh, Hubson. And, you know, there's a lot of them they, they would love to and they want to. But, you know, it's like most anything else, it takes... It takes bringing that uh, that eye candy to the table, you know, that eye candy to the uh, to the retail environment that the people, the consumers, want to pick up. It takes that first, and and the sad reality is, is that you know, in a lot of in a lot of industries, you know, there may be a product that is not even as good as a competitor's product, but the product that's not even as good may grossly outsell the product that's better. And, and that's a sad reality, but it's, you know, that's heavily linked to marketing. And, and not just marketing, but brand recognition. I mean, if, if there's a company that's had, uh, and obviously in this case, drones, multiple drones, all have been exciting. I can't think of a single DJI drone that's failed. The only one I was slightly disappointed with was the Spark. And that's because the Spark, the battery life wasn't good enough. But you know, looking at uh, looking at DJI as a whole, every drone they've released has been solid. It hasn't seemed rushed. It hasn't seemed uh, of poor quality. And you know, there there were some attempts that you know from a from a from a what's the word for it a uh, a consumer perspective that kind of irritated me. And that was the what was it the Mavic Pro Platinum 
and then the Phantom Four Obsidian. You know, basically, yeah, yeah the props aren't as loud, and, and we're going to give it a new paint job. I thought those were kind of cheesy. I didn't, I didn't like the direction that DJI took um, with those two drones. However, they were still solid drones, but it was just they were trying to – that was kind of in – my perception is that they were trying to test the consumer at that point and say, okay, you know, what, what defines new, you know, what, what is the minimal amount of improvements that we can make and still categorize it as something new that consumers will still want to buy. And, and that kind of irritated me with those two drones. But I mean, it's, uh, uh, Michael said, I agree with the idea of a Nafi two or pro version would do well as tougher and better uh, battery life drone. Yeah, I mean, the Anafi, I mean, they, it's, it's apparent that Parrot put a lot of thought into that. I mean, they, they, uh, they didn't haphazardly release the Anafi, but, you know, the fact that Parrot has this toy mentality in their mind, I don't know if it's the entire company or just a few people within the company, whatever it is, they need to fix that. And they need to say, you know what? Yeah, toys are great. We can make a lot of money selling toys. However, if we want to make more, we need to penetrate another space. You know, maybe Parrot needs to spin off and maybe it's not, you know, maybe they need to say, okay, you know, we're going to we're gonna have our toy division. You know, it's over here, silo one. And we're going to have our professional division. It's silo number two. You know, maybe Parrot um, reorganizes their company so that they can, uh, so that they can better compete. And, and I think it's, you know, I can imagine, and I don't work for Parrot, but I could imagine if I spoke French and I walked in there, I would probably walk in and I'd see all these toys, toys sitting around on a table. And then I'd see a drone that was the Anafi, which is still kind of a toy, but not really. And then I would see all these people, and I'd probably see like one or two people in the corner that are, that are the big like professional drone enthusiasts. And they're like, man, we're going to make Parrot great. But then you've got the masses that are, you know, toy lovers, and and they're 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 suppressing the abilities of their talent that would have the opportunity to create a professional drone that could compete with DJI. They're close, man. They're close. Parrot is an example of a company. They just need to fix again. They need to have their toy division. They need to have a line right here. My nose. This side pro. This side toy. And they need to keep that door shut because they don't need those employees interacting with one another because it's, it's, it's dangerous. Uh, Lozenarb says, Haha, true words never spoken at work. We hold customer panels to figure out what features they want, and then we only as a couple for each new version. Very cool. Yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know. I mean, it's, uh, I don't know. It, certain aspects, certain aspects of business, really excite me, but certain aspects really irritate me. And then, you know, in this case, you know, when I see a company, and I have no ties whatsoever to Parrot. I mean, I'm not even in France. I think they're based out of France, but yeah, man. I mean, they're close. I mean, I trust me on this, Parrot. If you're watching this, if any of your developers are watching this. Your marketing team, if anybody's watching this, share this with them. Hey, hire me. <laughs> hire me. I'll, 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 kick your, uh, I'll kick your development team in the butt and you can give them a jump start. I mean, I don't, I'm not afraid to do that. I mean, it's, you, could, you could be something great, Parrot, but if you don't, if you don't step away from the toys, man, you're never going to get anywhere. I mean, I'm sure the toy business is okay, but don't you want something better? I mean, come on. But anyway, enough with uh, with pulling uh, parrots' feathers there. So, yeah, I mean we we've got Mavic Air two coming, and and I'm excited. I mean I love DJI products, but even though I love DJI products, I'm not a DJI fanboy because it's DJI or nothing. It's just they make such a great product that there's nothing else that excites me, and that's why I want someone like a parrot. Again, parrot to me. And I know y'all have got your own opinions. Parrot to me is the most close to being a you know a would be DJI competitor. They just need to you know put that fence in their office. Professional drone people here, toy drone people here, and don't interact. Build a separate bathroom. 
build a separate break room and bring those teams together maybe once a quarter just to share their accomplishments. But don't let them interact on a daily basis, weekly or monthly basis, because it's going to taint. It's not taint. That's, a, that's not a good word. Uh, it's going to hamper their abilities to produce what they need to produce. Toy. Prodrome. You know, don't, don't mesh, you know, don't blend the two together. You know, have separate, you know, clear separation there. So, uh, Michael says, I can do the technical drawings, LOL. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to remind everyone, too, we do have, uh, uh, there is super chat if y'all want to, again, completely optional, but if you want a super chat, you can, or super sticker, just a great way to support the show. It's my goal to uh, start doing a lot more of these shows, and, and definitely as soon as Mavic Air 2 arrives, I'm going to be pumping out show, 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 video, 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 because that's going to be a big, uh, that's going to be a big thing, man. But uh, yeah, it's uh, I don't know. I mean, this stuff. Uh, oh man, I got some coupons. Um. It irritates me. I mean, it irritates me that we don't have, that DJI does not have a competitor. I mean, it really does. I mean, they need it. They need it for their own for their own team. I mean, they need some competition because if, you know, and I've never been to DJI, but I can imagine what it would be like to be there. And it's probably a lot of people that have made a lot of money, you know, the people that have been with the company for a while. And they're, they're probably just sitting there having a good time, eating good food, um, you know, just goofing off in the office and and not innovating and, and they're probably joking with each other it's like well you know what's a what's a minimal amount of features that we could add to a new product and still sell that product and that's that's probably their their little inside joke but if someone would come up if someone serious would step up and seriously compete with dji i mean we could see this you know we could see everything change change drastically I'm going to show y'all something really cool. Um, this is this new thing that I that I added to my live stream setup, and I'm going to set it up down here, and then I'm going to I'm going to pop it up for y'all. But I've got uh, let's see, I got to get into my streaming app here, and then I'm going to add it. Let's see what we got here. Uh, Network. Oh, there we go. There we go. So this is super duper cool. And I'm going to flip it around. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is super cool. So check this out. And let me see. I'm going to check my audio and see if I can adjust the audio. Okay, yeah, it is going to use. Oh, yeah, there we go. So I'm going to flip this over. So y'all see my phone here, right? So check this out. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> so see now, I'm walking around the studio, and y'all can see the uh, the phone camera. This and you you should be able to hear the audio through my uh, through my phone, and it's it's not going to be as clear as audio. I mean, not as high quality, but. Yeah, this is my new studio setup, and I've got uh, I've got things hyper organized here. There's my there's my live stream corner there. I've got LED lights underneath my huge desk. I've got this fake, uh, I guess you call it like a laminate floor, and then I've got uh, for my green screen. I got my key light. I've got these lights right here for the green screen, and then I've got my professional tripod with studio monitor. For my green screen segments and then all of this is voice command so i can turn on uh i can turn on the uh uh the green screen with voice commands i'm not going to do it now because i don't want to uh mess with your amazon devices and then i've got all my backpacking gear here and then over here i've got a very nice stein collection 
and I've got uh, ROMs from Caribbean. So I've got Ron Zacapa, really good stuff. A Solero 23, uh, El Viejo Luis, uh, tequila. Then I've got Jamaican rum. This rum right here, I'm going to pop it out and show you all. This is, this is something special. I got this in St. Kitts. This is the Appleton Estate Master Blender's Legacy. It's a very high-end rum. Haven't even taken it out of the box. Uh, and then this here can only be purchased in Canada. This is the Crown Royal Limited Edition. You can only get it in Canada, so that's kind of cool. This sucker right here came from. I brought it back from Jamaica, Appleton Twelve, which isn't as fine as the the one I brought from St. Kitts, but Twelve Year's still good. Uh, Angostura, I brought this from Tortola, Angostura nineteen nineteen. Uh, this right here came from Turks and Caicos, Bombora, the spirit of Turks and Caicos, and then this. And it's got a, can't grab it by the top because it's got a cork. This is 1703 Old Cask Mount Gay. And it says the perfected, perfected by tradition. So that's from Barbados. And then this I brought from uh, Bermuda. And this run's really special. This is the Family Reserve Black Seal by Gosling's. And they call it black seal because of the, the black seal at the top. The wax seal has nothing to do with the fact that it has a seal on the logo. Uh, but this one was bottled on uh, in 2014. And it's, uh, no, I'm sorry. It was bottled, for, yeah, it was 2014, but it was bottled 427, I think. This I'm going to open once I hit... Uh, 100 million video views so right now i think i'm at like 52 million but yeah so that's my rum collection you know i like my rum i like a little bit of uh you know i got my my canadian whiskey in there too but yeah every captain's got to have his rum uh let's see i'm gonna come back over to the studio set here yeah man i've i've worked and worked and worked i mounted that tv it's just a cheap uh 40 inch but it's it's good i mean since i fixed the firmware it's really good and then i added this wireless subwoofer and soundbar mounted all that crap myself um and see so you're talking about the acoustic panels acoustic panel there and then i've got acoustic panels all throughout the studio and i tell you man those make a huge difference that's why the audio is still so good here you can see my little drink right there look at that i mean it's purple Come back over here, and I'm going to pop up my you know, flip back to the main. Uh... There we go. Oh no, that's kind of cool. So that's a feature that was uh, it's Wirecast, and they added this functionality, which I think is pretty cool. Let's see. So we got, I agree with the idea. Uh, Lazenar said, ha ha, true words. Oh, okay, here we go. Michael, recently Parrot did just make the in-app purchases to 99 cents and just updated and added a few new operations of flight. You know, it's funny. That was one of the things when I had the Anafi that really irritated me is it was, it's like they're trying to pay to play. It's, it's kind of, I don't want to pay. You know, I just want to buy it and be done with it. I don't want to be buying enhancements for software. Uh, Brad says, looks nice. Appreciate it, man. Uh, Michael says, nice looking, lots of work. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, in, in something like this, especially when you're doing when you're doing live live streaming and the next uh, the next upgrade for uh, for Iron Sky's Adventure Channel and, and, of course, Epic Drone Show, which is the same studio. Uh, but I'm going to put a, uh, it's called an ATEM, A-T-E-M, and I'm going to use... This well, this camera here, if y'all can see it on the yeah, y'all can see it. I've got it right here, the A7R4. So instead of live streaming like I am now with this basic uh, USB webcam, I'm going to have that camera and some other cameras going through what's called an ATEM. And basically, it's a box, and it's like you know, like in a in a legitimate 
production studio where you can push one, two, three, or four, and it'll switch among the various cameras. And then when it switches, you can wire it up to where it'll add like a smooth transition or whatever. So there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of functionality that an ATEM can bring to the uh, to the playing field. Now the the thing is now with ATEM it's obviously they're in high demand because of all of the church broadcast and this, that, and the other. There's a lot of, a lot of companies because of, because of COVID-19 that have, uh, you know, purchased a lot of live streaming gear. So it's going to be, I mean, I don't know, probably I would guess maybe a month or so before I get that. But when I do, that's going to further refine the, uh, the live stream quality. Cause there's a lot of, uh, you know, I want to do more of these live streams. And in the past I didn't really have, the studio set up professionally enough to where I enjoyed being in it. Now, I mean, I've got, you know, I've got a nice floor that I steam mop. It stays, you know, super clean. I've got, uh, you know, I've got good rum in here. I've got, <laughs> I got everything I need, man. So, you know, I, I really want to take it to the next level. And, and especially with the new drones coming out, I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of opportunity to, uh, to have live shows uh, more frequently and, and uh and bring some more more exciting content in so that's you know it's it's a it's a day-to-day thing you know being an independent youtube channel you know it's it's not a it's not like these channels that are part of multi-channel network that potentially have tons of of disposable of money you know disposable money for this so i mean this is this is what it is so you know again you know it's y'all support you know your views subscriptions sharing with others supporting me on patreon.com forward slash irx guy super chats uh, shopping always for your drones, your electronics, anything. Chef Boy RD, just go to irxguy.com and shop my links there because that helps. You know that helps my channel to continue to grow. But you know, looking at analytics, the the goal, the the realistic goal that I have uh, right now, I'm at uh, seventy three thousand seventy five subscribers. You know, meet as soon as as soon as I can. I want to get to 100,000 subscribers because that's when I'll get the trophy from YouTube, and that'll be really cool to have in a studio. And you know, once I get that, um, I, you know, I feel like I'm starting to starting to gain a little bit of momentum here. So that's you know, that's the next the next uh, mini milestone would be 100,000 subscribers. And then obviously after that, you know, not too long after that, I expect that I'll be hitting the 100 million video view mark. And again, that's the 100 million video views is important because that's the opportunity uh, to unlock, to open the Gosling's Family Reserve rum uh, that I brought back from Bermuda. You know, I said I wasn't going to open this bottle. Uh, actually, in Bermuda, I did a uh, YouTube collab. I don't know if older videos, y'all have to check them out, but I did a YouTube collab with STK's Adventure Channel. And uh, that was one of the things when the, when the left there, I'm like, dude, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to pick up, uh, I'm going to pick up, you know, really good rum and take back. But I said, I'm not going to open this until, you know, the channel hits 100 million video views and, and I'm sticking to it. So, you know, that's, that's a milestone of video views, but the other milestone is subscribers and I need to get, you know, so anyone that hasn't subscribed already, you know, be sure to subscribe and ring that bell, <clears throat> ring that bell icon when you do. And that'll notify you whenever I post another video. And this live stream and all my live streams, I post all my Epic Drone Show live streams. Just go to epicdroneshow.com. And after they've concluded, you can watch the previously recorded live stream. And I'm going to try to, uh, you know, especially with the Mavic Air 2 coming out, I'm going to work to incorporate more live stream content surrounding that new drone. So... You know, I'm excited about that, especially, you know, having this, this uh, you know, this clean and, and uh, well-organized workspace now in the studio, you know, there's, there's opportunities to, uh, to better refine uh, the way that all of this is delivered. So, you know, that's, that's what it's all about, you know, being independent, but independent doesn't mean that you can't improve. You know, it just takes time. It takes, you know, support from your viewers. It takes, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that come into play. But I'm excited, and I appreciate y'all tuning in. I mean, this is just another epic drone show. Obviously, I don't have the uh, the Mavic Air 2 in my studio yet, but as soon as it's here, man, as soon as it's here, I'm going to be unboxing it, reviewing it, field testing it, so we're going to have a lot of fun. So, you know, like everything, you know, any 
any of the uh, any of the videos that you watch, whether it's a field test, you know, a tutorial, or whatever, you know, anything that you have questions about, just comment because that's the best way to to encourage me to uh, to address that question or comment or whatever within an upcoming video. I'm always, I'm constantly looking for video ideas. I'm constantly updating notes. I use my iPhone and and when I update notes in that, that's my to-do list for videos. Uh, Brad says, any show tomorrow? Yeah, you know what? I'll pro- I probably will. Um, I've got to do some, uh, I've got, uh, I've got other businesses that I run too. I mean, YouTube is one of my, one of my largest businesses, but I've got some other businesses I run too, but I'm going to try to work in a live show tomorrow. Uh, Brad says, do you think the Mavic Air 2 will replace the Mavic 2 Pro? That's to be determined. Again, until I get the Mavic 2 Pro in my hands and test it in the field. I mean, the biggest unknown for me without flying it yet and filming with it is, you know, how well, if it performs like it should perform on paper, as far as battery life and range and, you know, being able to attach a smartphone to the top of the controller versus having it, you know, tethered to the to the bottom like it was in the past. It wasn't really optimal. I think that's going to be a huge improvement just from a, you know, from a, a tactile feel perspective. Uh, the camera, though, you know, it doesn't have, uh, it doesn't have one-inch sensor. So one of the biggest curiosities I'll have about the Mavic Air 2 when I receive mine is the low light performance. If the low light performance can perform almost as well or possibly better than the one-inch sensor on the Mavic 2 Pro, then I personally wouldn't have the need for the Mavic 2 Pro because, again, I'm primarily landscape. I'm not using a drone for depth of field and this, that, and the other. If I was, I would probably exclusively use the Mavic 2 Pro. But uh, Brad says, what other businesses out of curiosity, what industries? Um, I, run a, uh, I run a social media consulting company. So, you know, if you ever need, if you or any businesses that you're affiliated with need social media consulting services, um, that's a service that I provide. Um, obviously, also <clears throat> basic uh, uh, basic IT consulting services, a uh, good example. Had a viewer, uh, it was probably, I don't know, a week or so ago, and they said, hey, man, I watched your video, you know, how to set up, uh, and actually let me link that video right now. They said, you know, I watched your video how to set up Google Wi-Fi, um, but, you know, I've got, you know, I've purchased it and I've, you know, trying to do this, that, and the other. Do you do you provide consulting services? And I said, well, you know, it's, it's great you asked that. And I said, because actually I do. Um, so I was able to, uh, this is the video that, that prompted that. Um, I was able to respond to that viewer and say, you know what, that's, that's great you asked. And, you know, what's your availability? I was able to meet with them spent a few hours with them and long story short um, they were able to uh, they were able to achieve the desired result and that being they had multiple Google Wi-Fi hotspots and I was able to assist them with setting up their mesh network and they had high speed uh, wireless internet throughout their residence so they were a happy camper but yeah anything you need I'm always looking for uh, you know for for business I mean you know I'm a I'm a capitalist I like to make money so uh, let's see. Brad says half inch, half inch in sensor, but 4K 60. Yeah, you don't get 4K 60 with the Mavic 2 Pro, so that's an edge to the, uh, you know, to the to the Mavic Air 2. But keep in mind that, you know, with that 4K 60, the file size of the video, if it's filmed in 60 frames per second versus 30, is probably going to be larger. Not that that's a problem, but just something to be aware of. Uh, Michael says Air 2 with one inch sensor camera would be the next step, but the price. You know what? I think the next step from that would be here here's what I think is going to happen. I think the Air 2 is probably going to do away with the, you know, the Mavic I think when they release Mavic 3, it's either going to be a, you know, a high-end camera only option or it's going to be a modular camera option. You know, whether they, you know, they could have the high-end 1-inch sensor or they could have the uh the zoom camera option or maybe a 360 camera. DJI still has not released a 360 360 degree spherical camera, which blows my mind. But uh, yeah, Brad says waiting for Mavic 3 Pro. I think gonna get myself a Super 73. Hopefully, yeah, uh, yeah. And I think 
Brad made a, a really good point. I think the uh, I think the Mavic the Mavic Three is going to be the next you know the next big pro drone, and and I don't know you know I don't know if we'll see uh, you know a Mavic Air Two with a one inch sensor. I think that may be reserved for the three. Super seventy three electric bikes are cool looking. Yeah, I mean, I, man, I would love to get back. I used to do a lot of road biking, and uh, you know, and also mountain biking. But when I was hit by a car, uh, that kind of scared me. Uh, I don't know if if I've shared the story with y'all on this on this live stream, but I was at a red light, and car comes up, light turns green, and they gun it to take off, hit the back of my road bike. And, uh, you know, I fall over, bang my leg up, this, that, and the other. And, and I walk, you know, walk across to the other side of the street and get on the sidewalk so that other cars aren't going to hit me too. And the person that was in the van, I mean, they were a total jerk about it. And they started cursing me, this, that, and the other. And, and, uh, and I just said, and they said, well, you know, you're smart, Alec, or whatever. I said, hey, I said, I'm not, I'm not trying to be smart at all. I said, I said you ought to be happy that, that I'm behaving like I am. I said, because you just hit a pedestrian. I said, you hit a pedestrian. And he said, well, I ought to call the cops. I said, you don't have to call the cops, sir. I said, and it was funny. The police station was literally catty corner to us. And I just waved at a cop. He came over, talked to me. You know, do you, are you okay? Do you want to press charges? I said, no. I said, I'm not, you know, I'm not that type of person. I don't, I don't want to press charges. The only thing looking back at that, that I wish I had done before the police officer left, I wish that I had moved my bicycle because it wasn't until I hopped back on it that I realized that the back wheel, when when the van hit me, hit so forcefully that it did, that it bent it. Um, you know, had I realized that, I would have made the person that hit me pay for uh, for a wheel replacement. But I didn't realize it until I rode off, and I I didn't get their tag number. So that was my loss. I had to spend a few hundred dollars on a wheel, which I shouldn't have, considering it was their fault. But anyway. That's why I don't road bike anymore. But yeah, the electric bikes, they look cool. I think that's a totally new industry. And, you know, it excites me, man. But uh, Brad says, just started my own drone business. So I knew to pro upgrades. Yeah, man. I mean, the truth is, you don't need a pro drone. I mean, a, for a drone business, anything will work. I mean, a Mavic 2 Pro, even a Mavic Air 1, for that matter. I mean, you got to keep in mind that and if you look at uh, something i would do is look at your analytics uh something i do for for drone business stuff is I, I like to look at at the devices that are viewing the content i mean ultimately yeah you want it to be as polished and as professional as possible but if you look at it and you realize that x percentage of views are coming from a smartphone then the need to, and I film everything in 4K, don't get me wrong, but the need to film everything in 4K may not even exist. I mean, you may be able to get by with a cheaper drone and, uh, you know, and still, and still, you know, deliver video that the people viewing with smartphones are happy about. The other, the flip side of that, though, is that if you're in a business to where you want to future-proof your content, definitely film in 4K because even if those customers even if the technology now is not viewing it in 4K, if that's still relevant content, say a year or two, three, four, five, six years down the road, you would definitely want it to be future-proofed. Uh, Brent says a lot of companies are requiring 20 megapixel photos now. Yeah, that makes sense, man. Um, I think, uh, was it the A7 III is 24 megapixel and this one, A7 Four, A7R4 that I'm using now. I think this is, off the top of my head, 62 megapixels. Nuts. Um, but yeah, that, that additional megapixel is nice because you can, uh, especially if you're doing landscape photography, and I sell a lot of landscape photography. That's one of my other businesses. But uh, but when you're, you know, when you're snapping a, a huge area and then you want to do, uh, you know, you just want to kind of crop in on a, uh, you know, in a small section like a sailboat in the ocean or whatever, having that extra megapixel is nice. Uh, Graham says, hey, Irish guy, I hope you're keeping safe. Long-time follower from New Zealand since you're fandom. Awesome, man. I appreciate it. Yep. I uh, hope you all are safe there, man. I've, I've been watching. Uh, I've got a couple of YouTubers in New Zealand that I that I keep up with, and, and it seems like 
at least, and I don't trust the media and I don't trust the government, um, but it seems like at least the perception is that it's probably not as bad in Australia and New Zealand as it is in the United States. The perception is that the United States now is number one uh, most impacted. So, yeah, I'm, I'm staying safe. Um, you know, I've got a ton of food. You know, I'm, I'm quarantined. I get out of quarantine to do, uh, you know, if there's essential business tasks that I have, you know, I do that. I mask up. I put goggles on. And as soon as I return to quarantine, I strip down before I enter the residence and, uh, you know, thoroughly scrub with soap and water. And then all the knobs and, you know, car and all that that I touch, I, I rub it down with the, um, you know, with the disinfecting wipes. So, you know, doing everything I can to stay safe. Hope I don't get it. Hope others don't get it. Um, I know it's media fueled, but the reality is, is that it, it, there's still a virus and the virus can be deadly. So, you know, for that reason, I'm very, uh, you know, not, not just necessarily for myself, but for others, you know, people that have pre-existing health conditions, uh, people that are elderly, you know, people that, you know, even if I was asymptomatic, that if I was around them, that I could, uh, that I could potentially, you know, potentially kill them if, you know, if they were in a high risk category. So, you know, it's nothing to be taken lightly. And I think, uh, you know, just being, just being uh, constantly proactive, being proactive as possible all the time. Uh, Graham says, yes, we flatten, uh, yes, flatten the curve here. Only five new cases today. We are lucky with the borders being, uh, man, y'all are lucky. I mean, that's, you know, I wish that, uh, you know, being, being in the United States right now, I wish that, that there had been some more that they had more proactively closed the borders because I, I know it's rough, you know, from an economic perspective, having to shut down a country. But, you know, the reality is, is that, you know, if things, you know, prevention, what, what's, the, what's the phrase? Prevention is the best cure. And, you know, in this scenario, prevention would have been the best cure, you know. And, and like you said, with New Zealand, boom, you know, they were proactive about it. Um, you know, the, it's... I wish it had been the same in the United States, but, and again, I don't believe the numbers in the media, but, uh, I don't know. I'm not taking any chances, man. I am not taking any chances and I don't, I don't want to see anyone else take chances. And the, the problem that's been created, at least in the United States, the problem that's been creative is created rather, is that, uh, a lot of people because of the media, you know, the media are making this, they're, they're making it look worse. And I mean, I'm not saying it's not bad. I'm not trying to downplay it at all. And I take it 100% seriously, but they're making it look uh, worse than it is. The problem they've created by doing that is that people are now not taking it seriously. So, I mean, you will see people in, in a form of rebellion. You'll see people out without a mask. You know, you'll see people hunkering down with, you know, five, six, seven other people walking down the street. I mean, just things that, that people are doing because they don't take it seriously because they're con they've convinced themselves that it's not real because the media, you know, the media must be. Uh, and, and Michael says, yeah, I'm on the higher risk list, diabetic, so I'm staying sequestered. No doubt, man. And, and I mean, that's the thing. I mean, my, uh, uh, my wife is a cancer survivor. So she is definitely not someone that needs to be uh, that needs to be put into contact with with myself or others that you know that may have come into contact with the COVID nineteen. So I mean it's it's uh, it's nothing to be taken lightly. And again, the people that are taking it lightly are the people that uh, that you know younger demographic. You know nothing can hurt them. You know they're they're down at. Uh, down at the beach funneling you know five six beers and they're they're doing great you know and we've all been there once you know i mean you know if you know you once at one point in your life you probably felt invincible but the reality is is that you know a virus that we don't have a cure for yet we don't completely understand and again you know this is unfortunately this is something that can morph into different things i mean you've already heard and and i don't believe everything I hear, 
the facts that I know about this is that I know medical professionals that that have witnessed multiple people die, not from other conditions, but actually from this COVID-19. Multiple people die during a single day. So that's that's not fluff. Um, what our what the media are, are sharing, I mean, a lot of that is is politically fueled, but the reality is it's real, and it can be deadly, and we don't have a cure. And we don't completely understand it. And we don't know how this virus may morph. And, and the part about the strokes and this, that, and the other, you know, people that are otherwise healthy individuals, you know, falling over and dying from a stroke, you know, unusual. Uh, I don't know. But, yeah, we'll, I'll get off the COVID-19 subject. I'm looking over here at my Alexa right there, and it's uh, it's uh, talking about COVID-19 too. I mean, I, I, I had to turn, except for YouTube, I had to turn off the news. I had to turn off the Facebook. I mean, I, I couldn't. It's it's a rabbit hole, man. If you sit there and watch that stuff, you'll you'll go down and and uh, you know worry yourself sick. And and I don't want to be worried about it. I mean, I just know that I will constantly, I will remain vigilant about making sure that I'm doing everything I can to reduce the risk of of picking it up, and then you know reducing the risk of spreading it to anyone else. And I mean, even in this in this studio, I don't have people in here, but I steam clean this. <laughs> I steam clean this for at least once a day or so, and I never wear shoes in here. So any shoes that are, or flip flops that I've worn outside, they stay outside. So I'm not tracking any, you know, because if people cough and it falls to the floor, and then you step in it, then it's in the floor of your vehicle. Then it's in the floor of your house if you wear those shoes or flip-flops in your house. I mean, you can, you go to the mailbox, you get your mail. Well, what about touching the mailbox handle? You know, how many mailbox handles has the postperson, postmaster or whatever touched before they touch yours? How about the envelopes themselves? How about the contents of the cardboard boxes? You know, especially the plastic type wraps. I mean, you can really... Uh, I think you should try flying your drones in more areas around your hometown. That's a good idea, man. You know, I, the thing is, is until this COVID clears, man. I mean, my thing, my 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 backyard is the is is the Caribbean, and until it clears for montage, high quality edits. I, that's what I'm gonna do, man. I mean, I'm gonna take. Y'all have seen my field where I do the, you know, all the phantoms. I'm out in a little grassy field, and that's that's my field test area. So, yeah, Brad, that's a great suggestion, man. I'm going to take uh, high-quality edits. I'm going to – maybe I'll do multicam, um, you know, just having this high-quality audio. I tell you, this thing right here I've really loved, this, uh, this little wireless mic. So I'll be using it for my, for my Mavic Air 2. Graham says, plenty of positives out there. We will get through this and adjust our lifestyles. Humans are naturally adaptive. Some humans are naturally adaptive, but there are a lot of people that are resistant to change. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll, we'll get, we, we will get through this. I mean, it's just, you know, my biggest fear, and, and again, I always like, always like to place politics aside, but uh, my biggest fear is that people that are unwilling to temporarily suppress the normal activity. I mean, I'm cutting my own hair, man. I got clippers I got off of Amazon. I'm cutting my own hair. And y'all can find a video for that on my channel. But, uh, you know, people that are accustomed to, especially the social lights and, you know, people that crave and, and need that excessive amount of social interaction, you know, the people that they can't fathom having a nice dinner at home and cooking it themselves. They've got to have a button seat in a restaurant. Those types of people are the people that aren't able to uh, to temporarily adjust to the temporary normal. And in what we've seen, and, and and especially in the United States, we're seeing this at a uh, at a national level now. We've got people that people from the medical community that that do understand the uh the the severity of this virus 
And then we've got people from the business community that, in their mind, they, yes, they're fearful, but because of isolation for X number of weeks, their fear starts to go away because they become stir-crazy. They've got to get out, they've got to get out, they've got to get out. And, and my biggest fear with this, you know, looking at it from a non-political perspective, is that what we're going to see is that we're going to see the masses becoming stir-crazy and, and allowing that, that sense of stir-craziness to result in poor decision-making. And poor decision-making being, you know, machoism, stepping out saying, oh, that can't hurt me. I'm too good for that. It can't hurt me. You know, COVID is not, not going to hurt me at all. And, you know, maybe COVID doesn't even exist. You know, it's creating that, that, uh, that feeling of machoism and... It's the machoism I think is going to bite everybody on the butt because what's going to happen is that things will be, people will 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 fail to adhere to social distancing guidance or recommendations rather, and we're going to have this spread. I I think, and I don't I don't want to be a fear a fear monger by any means, but I think wave two of this is going to be worse, and I think that wave two is going to happen because wave one was not successfully inoculated, if that makes sense. I think I think we're gonna see you know, we're gonna see people for whatever reason, you know, not not willing to adhere to those guidelines. And it's it's gonna be uh, uh Michael says I did drafting and CAD work over thirty years ago with graphic design. Very cool, man. But I tell y'all what, I've got, uh, I'll just be frank, I got a steak. <laughs> I, it, it's my luxury meal night because I had, uh, I was forward thinking enough before things got really bad and I went to my just little hole in the wall cheap uh, grocery store that has the best meat and got a bunch of ribeyes and I froze them. And tonight is a luxury meal night. I'm going to have a ribeye. And I'm going to have this, uh, it's called bacon jam. It's bacon, onions, and just all kinds of good stuff. It's going to be grilled, and it's going to be the steak topper. So I'm going to have to, uh, we're going to have to conclude this one. But to y'all's point, uh, I'm going to try to do a live show tomorrow. Thank you all for tuning in. And, you know, as always, if you haven't subscribed, be sure to do so and ring that bell icon when you do to be notified whenever I post another video. And with the Mavic Air 2, hopefully arriving here shortly, as soon as I get it, I'm going to be unboxing it, field testing it, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So I appreciate y'all, and most importantly, stay safe and keep your social distance, and we'll get through this together. Y'all have a good one. Hey, y'all, I, Rick Sky here. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe, like, and share. It's viewers like you that enable my channel to continue to grow. Thank you. Hey y'all, I, Rick Sky here. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe, like, and share. It's viewers like you that enable my channel to continue to grow. Thank you.